searching for a fifth victim of the prostitute serial killers. Tonight, investigators canvassed motels on Beach Boulevard in Anaheim, handing out this flyer looking for clues. Motel owners up and down Beach Boulevard told us detectives knocked on their doors this week and asked them if a guest checked in around February 14th but never checked out. Police described the fifth victim as an African-American female in her early 20s, short and petite with black hair, tattoos covering much of her body with ties to the Compton area. As investigators searched for answers earlier today, 45-year-old Dean Gordon and 27-year-old Frank Kano were arraigned on felony charges for raping and murdering three missing Santa Ana women and 21-year-old Jeray Estep. The discovery of her body on a conveyor belt in an Anaheim recycling facility last month helped crack the case. Today, her mother was in court for the arraignment. Sick to my stomach immediately. Michelle? Pat, a source tells me that the older of these two suspects, Stephen Gordon, has actually admitted to killing five women. Now, these women's bodies have not been found. All, uh, all of them, four of them have not been found. One has, however, one month ago today, the body of a 21-year-old was located on a conveyor belt at a recycling plant here in Anaheim. Now that I know about the ankle monitors, on anger. The mother of one of five women allegedly murdered by a pair of convicted sex offenders reacts to news from police today that the homicides were committed while Stephen Gordon and Frank Kano had GPS monitors, which are designed to track the whereabouts of parolees strapped to their ankles. The uh, GPS was in fact intact, uh, attached to these uh, suspects. The big break in the case came after the Anaheim discovery in March. Since last fall, Santa Ana police have been searching for three missing women who frequented the area of Main and First Streets. Without giving specifics, officials say the suspect's GPS devices and the victim's cell phone records helped tie these cases together. A pair of Orange County serial murder suspects appeared in court today as officials from two cities met to decide how and where to begin the gruesome task of attempting to recover the bodies of the victims, some of whom were murdered, authorities say, in 2013. And soon Anaheim police and Santa Ana police are getting together and they're putting together a game plan to try and recover bodies if possible. And where might that take place? Uh, landfills? That's one of the possibilities. It's, it, it's that and it's more. At a news conference Monday, the Anaheim police chief said that he's confident that convicted child molesters Stephen Gordon and Frank Kano killed at least five women with ties to prostitution and maybe more. It was also revealed that the men who were accused of rape and who were arrested in Anaheim wore GPS monitoring devices as a condition of their probation and or parole. The ankle bracelets were strapped on, police say, during the commission of the crimes. 28-year-old Martha Anaya was reported missing in Anaheim November 12, 2013. 34-year-old Josephine Vargas was reported missing in Santa Ana on October 24, 2013. And 20-year-old Kiana Jackson from Las Vegas was reported missing in Santa Ana on October 6, 2013. Police are not saying if they've found the remains of the three missing women, but stress the two suspects were arrested for their murders. And police say they're working with departments across California and the United States, saying the suspects could be tied to other similar types of murder. In Santa Ana now with Stephen Gordon's really stunning words, Michelle. And Sandra, we should tell you that law enforcement has been investigating these claims, but so far they have only turned up one body, that of a 21-year-old who worked in Anaheim. Now, Stephen Gordon is charged in four of these cases, but he did seem to suggest to the jury today that it's not him, but his friend is who is to blame. To begin to comprehend what happened here, <clears throat> I will have to roll back the clock. Dressed in blue with his hair slicked back, accused Orange County serial killer Stephen Gordon, who was acting as his own attorney, introduced himself to the jurors who will decide if he is guilty of murder. My name is Stephen Gordon, and I am representing myself in this case. The 47-year-old auto body shop worker and registered sex offender is accused of killing four prostitutes. The body of Jure Estep is the only one that was found. Gordon's friend, Frank Cano, will go on trial next. In no way am I a saint, but I have a conscience.
He does not. He's a predator, and I'm going to prove it to you. Authorities used evidence from GPS monitoring anklets worn by both men who were on parole during the killing spree. In his opening statement, DA Larry Yellen told jurors that the victims were hunted down like animals. Now begins my hunt for the truth and why. Stephen Gordon wants to call Frank Cano to the stand to testify, something he could refuse so as not to incriminate himself. Partners in crime officials say an old friend that Stephen Gordon suggested to the jury is the one. I just want a final resting place for my daughter, says Erlinda Salcedo. On Friday, police came to her Santa Ana home and confirmed what the family long feared. They had found the body of 28-year-old Martha Anaya, who'd been missing since November. Detectives believe she was one of at least four victims murdered by alleged serial killers and transients, 27-year-old Frank Cano and 45-year-old Stephen Gordon. I started crying and screaming and I went to my room and I just started asking why. For months, Anaya's family and those of other victims held vigils and begged for information. Police say the suspects both served time for committing lewd acts on a child. Tonight, we obtained documents that show the suspects were arrested and convicted in 2012 of traveling to Nevada and failing to register as sex offenders. Police aren't elaborating on what led them to connect the men to three missing women in Santa Ana, but say it started last month when detectives in neighboring Anaheim started investigating the murder of Jure Esep. The 21-year-old from Oklahoma had been in Anaheim six days when her body was discovered at a recycling plant. She was a mother. So was Anaya. Her daughter tells us just hours before police came to her door, she was still sending her mother messages on Facebook, hoping for an answer. I said, I know I have hope. Convicted Orange County serial killer Stephen Gordon smiled as he walked into a Santa Ana courtroom filled with grieving families. And then came the tears. Well, I am sorry for everything, but those are hollow words compared to what what those women went through. In December, a jury found Gordon guilty of murdering four women. Today, the 48-year-old was sentenced to death. These steps have no forgiveness for him. We have no forgiveness for him. We see nothing more fit for him than death. Jody Estep's daughter was one of the victims who was kidnapped off of the streets. Stephen Gordon. You're right, she was beautiful. And I'm so glad that you cannot do this to another woman ever again. As Stephen Gordon heads for death row at San Quentin, his co-defendant Frank Kano is getting ready for his trial. in Anaheim Wednesday was identified as 42-year-old Lloyd Middaw. Just two days after his death, a third homeless man was found fatally stabbed in Yorba Linda. To raise public awareness and ask for the public's help in catching what we believe to be a serious, dangerous serial killer operating in Orange County. This is what Anaheim Police Chief John Welter is calling the person responsible for fatally stabbing three homeless men within the last two weeks. We believe it's a male wearing dark clothing and a hoodie type dark sweater or jacket. These images come from a surveillance camera at a strip mall in Placentia. Next to where this person is standing is the body of 53-year-old James McGilvery. He was found stabbed to death on December 21st. Police believe this man is most likely responsible for McGilvery's death. The grainy images taken at the scene include what might be the suspect's car. We're also asking the public to look at a photo of a white compact that we now believe pretty firmly is a 2000 to 2003 white Toyota Corolla four-door. Nearly a week after the first attack, a second stabbing took place in Anaheim at the Santa Ana River Trail. The man has been identified as 42-year-old Lloyd Madoff. Police say both of these stabbings occurred at night, most likely while the victims were asleep. The body of a third victim was found just two days later at the bottom of a stairwell behind the Yorba Linda Library. He has been identified as 58-year-old Paulus Cornelius Smith. 
As police continue to investigate these stabbings, one homeless man says he's very concerned and is doing everything he can to stay off the streets, especially at night. I tried to rent a room or there's the armory what's open right now for the homeless. They feed you and let you uh, sleep overnight. The news conference wrapped up a short time ago and officials released these three photos taken from surveillance video outside a strip mall in Placentia where 53-year-old James McGilvery was killed. Now the first two photos show a 2000 to 2003 white Toyota Corolla that may be connected to the case seen near the victim around 6.40 p.m. on December 20th. The third photo was taken about an hour and a half later around 8.15 p.m. that night showing the suspect wearing a black hoodie approaching the victim just before the fatal stabbing. Each of the three victims were stabbed multiple times and all were homeless at the time of their murders. Two were uh, stabbed in the evening hours before midnight and one was stabbed in the late afternoon, probably still at daylight. We believe these murders are likely committed by the same suspect and we feel he's extremely dangerous to the murder. With allegations that there were multiple murders and that the murders were committed while lying in wait and with the use of a deadly weapon. If 23-year-old Itzquatl Ocampo is convicted, he faces a minimum sentence of life in prison without the possibility of parole. These charges also mean that Ocampo is eligible for the death penalty. Victim number one, December 20th, 2011, 53-year-old James McGillivray. This was the key to the case because the incident, which took place at a commercial complex at 140 North Bradford in the city of Placentia was caught on a surveillance video. While wearing dark pants and a black hooded sweatshirt, the defendant is accused of walking quickly and with a clear purpose to where Mr. McGillivray was lying. Kneeling on the victim's chest and mounting the victim and stabbing him several times. The defendant is accused of stabbing the victim, this victim, Mr. McGillivray, more than 40 times. In each of these cases, the violence, the number of st stabbings, the number of stab wounds of each victim increased. The Orange County Crime Lab pathologist concluded that the weapon was, that was used was remarkably similar in each of these cases, if not the same weapon. A single edge blade, at least seven inches long, made of heavy gauge metal. The blade had gone through bone without chipping or breaking the blade. And this is a picture of the knife that we believe that it is the murder weapon. This is called a K-Bar Bulldozer. The fourth victim in this case was featured and pictured in a Los Angeles Times article. There's a picture of him talking to a police officer. The evidence is gonna show in this case that the defendant specifically sought out this victim for participating in this article. He relished the media attention to the crime. He stalked the victim until he got him. The defendant, when he was contacted by the, uh, by the police, had blood on his hands and blood on his face. And he's, then he was identified in infield lineups. Investigators located bloody clothing, including a black hoodie, gloves, and a K-bar knife where the defendant Ocampo, or near where he was apprehended. We'll be proving that the defendant planned all of these murders in advance, that he stalked his victims, that he looked for the right opportunity to execute them. He did execute them, and we'll also be proving that he had additional victims already selected. He went through checkpoints twice. Spoke to officers. This 23-year-old uh, young man was a vicious killer. That he had in his mind a desire to kill people, and that uh, and that he followed through with that, and that he was uh, uh, he was a. What you done is right or wrong. Wrong, but it had to be done. Why did it have to be done? Just. Satisfy your need? No. Uh, not only did I make the county look bad or the state, 
they were making the place look bad also. Okay. So because of their state, their homeless state, and basically sucking up resources of society, they were making us look bad. Yes, sir. And that's why it needed to be done. Yes, sir. So you, really what you were doing is you were helping clean up the county, clean up the area. In a way, Six Orange County residents, including four homeless men, sits in Orange County Jail, but the impacts of the crimes continue to be felt. That was the message at a special meeting at Vineyard Christian Fellowship Church Saturday in Anaheim. The church on Isla Palma is very close to two of the murder scenes. It's also where volunteers gather to bring some food and clothing to the area's homeless. It's important to just see them as they're just like us, you know. People make mistakes and it's fine and we're st they're still cared about and there's people out there willing to help. The meeting today included members of the Homeless Homicide Task Force investigating the crimes. The county's crisis response team was also available for people who wanted to talk about the events, which terrorized North Orange County for several weeks. Resident Don Poland wanted to reach out to the homeless in her area and learn a lot in the process. It's people who've lost their jobs, they've lost their homes, they may not have anyone to stay with. You've got a lot of families and children, and people don't necessarily realize just how many homeless people are out here. The Homeless Homicide Task Force is here to answer questions, but today's event is more about the community's healing than the case. A lot of people had called and emailed the station saying people taking part in a walk in memory of John Barry. One of the four homeless men murdered by alleged serial killer, an ex-Marine, it's so cold Acampo, who is awaiting trial. Friends came together Saturday at the softball fields on the corner of La Palma and Fairmont to share memories of the homeless man who was fourth and last victim of an alleged serial killer. We feel it's important for us to be out here today. Coach Rich Medellin of Esperanza High School often trains his team along the nearby river trail and frequently saw the homeless man often sitting on his favorite bench. He was one of the last people to speak to him. I spoke briefly with him and uh, told him to take care of himself. He said everything was okay and uh, I told him, well, be careful. Um, and later that evening we found out uh, the unfortunate incident that occurred. The community came together through without warning, a nonprofit organization created to provide financial help to families faced with unsuspected loss. People of all ages came out to raise money for John's family while remembering him. Most people ran by him really quickly because they thought he was going to be strange. And I smiled and waved to him and I thought he wasn't going to do anything. But he gave me this big smile and waved back. More times I saw him, I never saw him frown. I always saw him smiling, saying hi to people. And he just taught me not to take stuff for granted. Just be glad for what you have. And the stories continued to be shared as the walk went on. Caroline Bryan told us about the time Barry helped catch her runaway dog. And he went through the park. The park was busy, but he just kept bouncing from person to person. And I could not keep up with him. He's a whippet, runs fast. So um, I went up, I came up to the rock, and there was my dog stopped, and John was petting him. This is the bench where John Barry often slept along the Santa Ana River Trail. And this is where his friends came together to say a final farewell. Sometimes you think, oh, you're maybe the only one helping somebody like that, but it's not the case. I mean, there's a lot of people that have their stories of how they interacted with him and gave him things and, and clothing and money, and, and it's just, uh, it's not what you think a, a homeless person would be. John Russell knew Barry for eight years and will remember him as a good man. The crowd then released their balloons in honor of their friend. Yeah. If anybody... You know, after they passed away, if you think, oh, I hope they're with God, I know he's with the Lord. Do you think your son would ever do something bad against homeless people? Because you're homeless yourself, right? Exactly. So, I would say no. No, because I saw him so many times giving the last money he had in his pocket to that people, to the homeless, to the people that are asking for some help. He used to take almost every week or sometimes even daily food and toys and things to the Salvation Army and to the Goodwill and to help other people. My son always been a role model, yes. not only for his family, 
but for some other people. Elder people than him have respect and know who my kid is. Yeah. I I don't know because I don't know nothing. I don't know. I don't know nothing. Last Thursday, he showed me the paper that the FBI plays on different uh, places and showed me that. You know, he was worried about me because I didn't believe my wife when she told me that you know uh, homeless were being killed. When he came back from Iraq, he told me that that. You were right. Uh, what do you mean, Mio? Well, everything they promised to us, it was a lie. I never got the opportunity to do what they told us to do, and that's why the reason, the reason why I, want, you know, I wanted to go. He had a lot of initiative, motivation, incentives. He was uh, very eager. When he came back after his release, nothing of that. Nothing. So he changed. He's he changed. Like, he he changed. He was a, uh, not a totally different person because he was still helping people. He was uh, still loving his family. Was he, was he hearing voices? Uh, he uh, he started talking about stuff that didn't make any sense to me. Like what? Like. Uh, the end of the world and that something big was coming, something big, the like, like yes, like a big war, you know, big war. Uh, I, I was concerned, you, yes, I, I, I went with, uh, you know, I, I went with him to try to get some help. With who? Uh, like well, um, counseling? Um, counseling. Um, he, uh, he got an appointment. Uh, he went and then, but uh, from there, I don't know, I, you know, I, I don't know what happened, but uh, right on, uh, this place is, is in Anaheim. So he did go, but. Yes. But what I'm, what I'm concerned about is that how come, you know, the military knew that he was a different person and done nothing and just released him. They never did anything for, for, for his desire, for his initiative, they kill, they kill the person he was. They kill his person, the person he was, and that's the only possibility I can think that he will do something like that. It is possible, anything is possible, yes, anything, but me knowing my kid, his behavior, and how he supports other people and likes to help other people, no. jail cell. 25-year-old Itzkoto Ocampo was found in his jail cell Wednesday evening. He was transported to a local hospital where he died Thursday afternoon. So far, a cause of death hasn't been determined for the former Marine accused of killing several people. In October 2011, prosecutors say Ocampo stabbed his childhood friend and his friend's mother to death. The other four people Ocampo was accused of killing were all homeless men living in different parts of the Los Angeles area. Ocampo wasn't arrested until after a witness spotted and chased him in a mobile home park in January 2012. Prosecutors believe the suspected killer was stalking the homeless and might have had a goal of killing 16 people. The Orange County District Attorney's spokeswoman told the Los Angeles Times Californians should be disappointed the man prosecutors wanted to put to death won't go to trial. It really deprives the victims and the people of California of the ability to put Mr. Ocampo to death on our terms and get justice for the victims of these crimes. According to KABC, Ocampo was supposed to go to trial in May of 2014. The Orange County District Attorney's Office is investigating